pranams to swami ji the chairperson distinguished scholars in the audience i begin my talk with a kind of a disclaimer that there is nothing original in my paper it is all that bhagwan sri krishna said what sri ramanuja said on what sri krishna said what vedanta deshika said on what sri ramanuja said and what shankaracharya said it's just a collection of all the shlokas that bring out the vishishta advaita siddha clearly i begin my talk now among the several exegesis on shrimad bhagavad gita shri ramanuja's gita bhashya stands out distinctly for its explicit polemics aimed at establishing the vishishta advaita siddhanta while the entire commentary is predicated on the vishishta advaita philosophy the interpretation of several shlokas aims at explicitly refuting other darshanas this paper selects shlokas from the gita that ramanuja analyzes in detail to establish the nature of chit animate beings achit inanimate matter and ishvara supreme being and their relationship that form the crux of vishishta advaita the basis for the meticulous argumentation of shri ramanuja are further elaborated to the minutest particle by shri vedanta deshika in his tatparya chandrika with the support with the support of deshika's bhashya in english translation and swami adi devananda's translation the paper seeks to paraphrase ramanuja's logical analysis and refutation of the interpretation of the other systems of thought the first chapter and the first 10 shlokas of the second chapter set the context for sri krishna's upadesha of the gita shastra the purpose of which is to rid arjuna of his misplaced compassion for those whom he is said to fight against in the dharma yuddha and his delusion regarding the nature of dehatma yatatmya the truth about body self relationship to that effect shloka 11 of chapter 2 begins by pointing out the contradictions in arjuna's thought process though concerned about the obligations towards prithrus which indicates his awareness of their existence even after their physical death arjuna grieves for what should not be grieved for the nature of the atman agata sun being nitya and that of the body gata sun being anitya the explanation of agata agata sun as atman and gata sun as dehan bodies as given by shri ramanuja is different from those of other commentators who explain agata sun as the living and the gata sun as the dead nityatva chetanatva and bahutva we begin with shloka 12 in which the personal pronouns aham i tvam you ime these vayam be and sarve all bear the weight of the entire siddhanta natve vaham jatu nasam natvam neme janadipah nachaiva na bhavishyamah sarve vayamatah param aham pratyaktva refers to sarveshwara with sarva, sarva niyantritva controlling all tvam refers to arjuna the chetana the jivatma facing him ime janadipaha refers to these rulers of men the chetanas not facing him you and these rulers of men form one group you yam that is what shri ramanuja says you and the different jivatmas sarve all i you all of the others vayam be anitya that is there never was a time nor will there be a time when i you these others all of us did not exist or will not exist this establishes at one stroke that paramatma is distinct from jivatma arjuna and other jivatmas rulers of men and also that one jivatma is different from another 
This is a primary enunciation of the theory of Vasishtadvaita. Nityatva, eternality, Chetanatva, conscientness, and Bahutva, plurality of Jivatmas, is explicitly stated. Both Paramatma and Jivatmas are Nitya, but Ishvara is distinguished by Sarva Niyantritva, whereas the Jivatmas, Uyam, are Ishitavya, ruled over by the Paramatma. This is validated by Shruti Pramana, Ramanuja quotes Svetavatara Upanishad, Nityo Nityanam, Chetanas Chetananam, Eko Bahunam, Yo Vidadati Kaman, Yaha Ekaha Nityaha Chetanaha, all indicating Paramatma, are in Prathama Vibhakti and singular, distinguishing the Paramatma from the plurality of Jivatmas. If the Beda difference with Ishvara is not Paramartika, real, then there is bound to be mixing of Swabhavas, Ubhaya Lingatva of Paramatma and Dukkitva of Jivatmas. If the Beda between one Jivatma and another is not real, then there is Anupapattati as the different categories of Baddha and Mukta, Sishya and Acharya, cannot be accounted for. If we juxtapose this with Shankara's comment on the shloka, as a self, the Atman, we are eternal in all three periods of time. The plural us is used with reference to the bodies that are different. It does not mean that there are more than one self. It becomes obvious why Ramanuja makes such an effort to defend his stand. While Nityatva of Jivas is accepted by both systems, the reality of the Bahutva is the essential feature of Visishtadvaita. Ramanuja gets into a lengthy refutation of the Upadi theory of Bhaskara, according to which the Veda is caused by Upadis, and the Mayavada of Advaita, according to which the differentness is caused by maya or illusion. And once Advaita Jnana is achieved, the differentness disappears, although the impressions remain in Vyavaharas. This, according to Ramanuja, is the major flaw that it, they still remain in the Vyavaharas. The Aham Tvam difference is reiterated again in Shloka 5 of Chapter 4 in answer to Arjuna's uh, query regarding how Krishna could have uh, how Krishna could have taught this Shastra to Vivaswan ages ago and now to him, implying how the Nikila Heyanika Kalyanaika Tanasya Sarvagnyasya Avapta Samastakamasya birth can be of the same nature as that of gods, men, etc., other Jivatmas who are Karma Bandita. Bahuni me vyati tani janmani tavacha arjuna tanyaham veda sarvani natvam vetha parantapa. This shloka emphasizes the nature of the difference between the Lord's successive births, incarnations, and those of ordinary jivatmas. Though both he and they take many births, he knows and remembers all of them, whereas Arjuna does not, nor do other jivatmas. Shloka 6 of chapter 4 answers three questions implied in Arjuna's doubt, namely, the mode of the Lord's manifestation, the reality of his form, and the cause of his incarnation. The crucial phrase in Shloka 6 is, Sambhavami Atmamayaya, Ajopi San Abhyayatma Bhutanam Ishwaropi San, Prakritim Swam Adishtaya Sambhavami Atma Mayaya. The Lord has the special attributes of Ajatva, birthlessness, and Avyayatma, undecaying nature, imperishability. He is the Lord of all beings, Ishvara. While retaining all these, he is born of his own free will, unlike Jivatmas who are born because of their karma. He retains his own swabhava while taking birth as gods, men, etc. Ramanuja uses 
swameva swabhavam adishtaya to explain the prakriti explain prakriti to differentiate it from trigunatmaka prakriti the jivatma is get enmeshed in this swabhava it says divya mangala swarupa which is his upadana material for his avatara atma maya and atmiya sank means atmiya sankalpena by his own free will it means by my own knowledge or by my own will and the incarnation is real not as if it is real as construed in advaita shankara's comment on this is as follows i appear to be born and embodied through my own maya but not in reality unlike others shloka 11 extends the incarnation aspect to an illustration of the of a saulabhya guna ye yata mam prapandyante tan sadaiva bajami aham mama vartamanu vartante manushyaha parthah sarvashah shri ramanuja prefaces this with the statement that the lord protects not only those who resort to him in the forms of gods men etc but also those who resort to him in whatever form they wish to according to their inclination including archarupa desika observes that while shankara uses the word anugrahnami to explain bajami aham ramanuja uses the word darshayami that is shows himself to his devotees through his sulabha uh, sulabha darshanatva the lord who is inaccessible even to yogis can be seen with physical eyes by devotees in measure of their bhakti sarva pekshitehi sarva prakarehi whichever form is wished for is expanded upon by deshika as priyatama pitru putra suhrut bratru vritya saratitva adi rupani this shloka brings out the saulabhyatva of the lord brahmatmakata the next shloka in the selection is shloka 24 of chapter 4 brahmarpanam brahmahavihi brahmagno brahmanahutam brahmaiva tena gantavyam brahma karma samadina this refers to the state of mind that the person performing the yagna as part of karma yoga should possess brahma karma samadhi the ladle with which the oblation is offered the oblation itself the person offering the oblation are all effects of the brahman the performer of yagna contemplates thus on all acts as filled with the supreme brahman or as having the supreme brahman as the self he realizes his self which has the supreme being as its self all karma along with all accessories have parama purusha who is brahman as a inner self which is a inner controller thus thus karma itself takes the form of jnana brahmaiva is explained as sakshat atma avalokana sadhanam karma becomes an instrument for atma avalokanam sarvam sarvam brahmatmakataya brahmamayam the meaning of brahmamaya is not swarupa aikya as in advaita but brahmatmakata in visishta advaita it is not total identification with the brahman but existence as separate entities inseparably associated with the brahman through the relation of shariratma bhava atma sakshatkaram implies knowing the self in its pure form devoid of association with prakriti this form is the same in all individual cells and paramatma hence the person sees the same self in all individuals there is samyata between individual cells and para brahman a mukta atma gets samyata with para brahman in certain aspects like ajahata papma vijaro vimrityu vishoka vijigesa satyakama satyakalpa but not paramatmas gunas of vibhutva सर्व जगत कारणत्व सर्व अंतर्यामित्व लक्ष्मी पतित्व मोक्ष प्रदात्व सर्व कर्माराध्यत्व एंड सर्व शेषित्व विच आर ऑल यूनिक टू हिम अकॉर्डिंग टू रामानुजा द कर्मा परफॉर्म बाय द मुमुक्षु इज ज्ञानाकारम 
by reason of a seeing Brahman as a self in everything. That is a direct means of realizing the individual self without the mediation of Jnana Yoga. Sakshad Atma Avalokana Sadhanam. According to Shankara, the enlightened Karma Yogi sees Brahman in everything. The instrument, the oblation, the action, the agent and the goal. The Gantavyam is Param Brahman, the destination. In Ramanuja's Bhashya, the Gantavyam is the Sadhanam. Following the same thread in Shloka 35 of this chapter, Sri Krishna speaks of the Atma Yatatmya Vishaya Sakshatkara Swarupasya Lakshanam, the characteristics of knowledge regarding the nature of the self in the form of direct perception. Once Arjuna understands Atma Yatatmya, the real nature of the self, he will be rid of his delusion the possessiveness and the grief that follows it. He will know that dissociated from Trigunatmaka Prakriti, all cells are essentially the same in nature, that is Jnananda Kara. He will see the Jnana Prakasha in Parabrahmam also. In this respect, there is equality among all Jivatmas and Paramatma, who, however, as earlier mentioned, is distinguished by Sarva Jagat Karanatva and Sarva Niyantritva. Param Atma, Yamunacharya's Gitartha Sangraha, which forms the basis for this Bhashya, summarizes chapter 6 thus Yoga Bhyasa Vidihi, Yogi Chaturda, Yoga Sadhanam, Yoga Siddhihi, Swayogasya, Paramyam, Shashta Uchyate. Accordingly, Shloka 7 of this chapter begins with a description of the proper conditions for the beginning of yoga applicable both for the karma yogi and the jnana yogi. Jitatmanaha prashantasya paramatma samahitaha shitoshna sukadukkeshu tatha manapamana yo. In the person whose mind is conquered with the opposites of heat and cold, pain and pleasure, honor and dishonor, overcome, serene with the cessation of all activities of the external sense organs, the great self is well rest rested in the mind. The self is qualified by the adjective great. Here, the great self, Param Atman, refers to the individual self, Pratyagatman, and not the Supreme Being, Brahman. It is referred to as great as it has reached a higher stage of self-awareness than earlier. Or it can be construed as Atma Param Samahitaha, that is the Atma is present abundantly or well settled in the mind. Deshika points out that Shitoshna Sukadukkeshu Mana Pamanayo goes along with Jitatmanaha and not Samahitaha. In uh, Sri Aurobindo's version, we find this. It is pertinent here to contrast Ramanuja's comment with Shankara's interpretation of Paramatma. Quote, when a man has subdued the aggregate of the body and the senses, when his mind, Antakarna, is tranquil, when he has renounced all actions, then the Supreme Self actually becomes his own self. We now move on to Shlokas 29 to 32 of the same chapter, where the four stages in which meditation attains fruition are explained. The first stage is Atma Atma Samya, seeing the similarity in all cells as the essential nature of all cells is Jnana Swarupa, pure consciousness. This Desika calls Jnanaika Karataya. The second stage is Atma Paramatma Samya, seeing the similarity between the individual cells devoid of defects and the Supreme Self with respect to pure, being pure consciousness, nirdoshataya. The third stage is Paramatma Prakaratvena Samya, seeing that all cells are the same as they are all his prakaras, as he is the antaryami in all the cells, Brahma Tadguna Sambandena. The fourth stage is Asambandha Samya, seeing that all the cells are equal when dissociated from sorrows and joys. Itara asambandena. Jivatma sakshatkara is not like Paramatma sakshatkara. 
in that the individual self does not have a form like Paramatma, which has a Divya Mangala Swarupa. We thus see that realization of the individual self is integrated with the awareness about the parity of all selves when shown of their doshas and their parity with Paramatma with respect to Jnana. This becomes the state preliminary to Paramartha realization. The next uh, subject is Seshi Sheshatvam. The second hexat <coughs> of se chapter 7 to 12 deals with the nature of Paramatma and the means to attain him. In shlokas 4 and 5 of chapter 7, Lord Krishna describes his two prakritis, the material prakriti and the higher prakriti, which is the Jiva Bhuta, the life principle by which the whole inanimate universe is sustained. The two prakritis belong to him because they originate in him. He is the origin and dissolution of the universe. Hence, he is the Lord Seshin. This is confirmed by the Shrutis and Smritis. Shloka 7 categorically states the supremeness of the Lord and how everything animate and inanimate is strung on him like gems on a thread. The Seshi Sheshatvam relationship between Ishwara and Chit and Achit is made explicit in the shloka. Mattaha parataram nanyat kinchidasti dananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre manigana eva. There is nothing above him. He is superior to all in two ways. One, he is the cause of the two prakritis, Chit and Achit, as also their controller, Seshin. The Achit is controlled by the jivas who form the inner controller session of their bodies. Two, he is also the possessor of Jnana, Bala, Shakti, Virya, Aishwarya, Tejas and such other attributes. All Chit and Achit, whether in their causal state or in the state of effect, is strung on him. They exist as the body of the Brahman, Sharira. This is corroborated by Shruti Vakyas. Yasya Prithvi Shariram, Yasya Atma Shariram, Esha Sarva Bhuta Antaratma, Apahata Papma, Divyo Deva Eko Narayanaha. This crystallizes Vishishta Advaita. Only the Supreme Being exists, and all animate and inanimate things are as prakaras or modes. Ramanuja adds, therefore, all terms in common parlance for different things like table, chair, desk, etc. denote him only. Sri Krishna follows this by giving examples of how he is the essence in everything, taste of the water, light of the sun, smell of the earth, sound of ether, etc. in the next two shlokas. Shloka 14 of chapter 7 is crucial to the understanding of the nature of Paramatma. It answers uh, Arjuna's query why the Supreme Being is not understood by everyone. Very few individuals rise to the level of understanding and realizing the true nature of Paramatma because of his maya, not to be construed as illusion, but as power. His divine power, Daivi Maya, is created by him, consisting of the three gunas assumed for Leela, Krida Pravartena, and therefore difficult to overcome. Only those who take refuge in him alone, renouncing the maya, pass beyond it. Daivihi esha gunamai mama maya duratyaya mameva ye prapadyante tarantite. Maya is not used in the sense of false or illusory. It is used in the sense of power of generating wondrous effects, magical power, vichitra karya karatva, as in the maya jalam of a magician, the real impressions generated in the mind by unreal objects. This maya obscures the real nature of the Lord and also makes the mind see the objects as enjoyable. But those who see beyond this maya realize and worship him. This is in contrast to Shankara's explanation. The illusion maya formed of gunas is inherent in me, Vishnu, the Lord. Such being the case, whoever abandon all formal religion and completely devote themselves to me, their own self, the Lord of illusion, they cross over the illusion which deludes all human beings. They are liberated from the bondage of samsara. It is after several births that the enlightened man finds refuge in me, realizing that Vasudeva is all. 
such a great soul is rare to find bahunam janmanam ante distinction between the inner self and his body is kshetragnya or feel knower applying the same principle this to the supreme being he is the feel knower of all fields the field the material bodies and the individual knowers of the material bodies are his attributes and cannot exist as entities separate from him and hence can be denoted as one with him by coordinate predication he is the inner self of all material bodies and jivas he is the inner controller the advaita argument that this denotes identity of the over self and self on the ground of coordinated predication is disputed by ramanuja this argument is extended to a discussion of contradictory shruti statements which are ultimately reconciled to establish that the supreme being contains within himself the conscient and non-conscient entities in their gross and subtle conditions as his modes he is the effect and the cause this paper concludes with the crucial concept of total surrender in vishishta advaita which is a corollary to the absolute subservience discussed earlier in shloka 27 of chapter 9 sarva dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam braja aham tva sarva papebhyo mokshayishyami maschah sarva dharman parityajya is interpreted in two ways giving up the agency possessiveness and expectation in the practice of karma jnana and bhakti yogas or giving up expiatory rights for the elimination of past sins which may take several births to fall off once the devotee surrenders to the lord with pure devotion he has nothing more to fear an attempt was made to present a few select shlokas from the gita bhashya to bring out shri ramanuja's determined and sincere effort to justify the vishishta advaita standpoint against other contentious perspectives by making ishvara chit and achit a composite whole the idea of the interrelationship between them is brought out which inspires one to act with sensitivity towards fellow human beings and nature and reverence to the one above the concept of saguna brahman serves as a model for jivas to raise themselves to that level of perfection while being assured that the supreme is accessible and responds to the cry of love the promise of the lord's protection to any one who totally surrenders to him renouncing all agency in and fruit of action instills confidence and security in beings that the world inanimate and animate is real and not an illusion makes one lead life with conviction this in short is the significance and relevance of shri ramanuja's mission and message thank you very much